Good morning. Thank you all for joining us. I know it's a few minutes early, but we thought we would just chat with you and tell you how much we appreciate you joining us. And I'm Carol Dean, President of From the Heart. And I thought maybe you might want to know about our film grant because we have one more grant this year. And that closes at the end of October. October 31st is the deadline. So we're looking for films that are unique and make a contribution to society. And we take shorts, docs, features, webisodes. Uh, and we're looking for things that are, uh, have good, compelling stories, are uh, information, uh, social justice we like, character-driven docs. We love good features and uh, creative shorts. So that's what we're looking for. And so the way we'll work today is that if you'll put your questions in the chat bar, then um, someone will read them to me so I can make sure I answer all of them. And I want you to know that there's a lot to do in a funding party when you put it all together. I mean, in the 20 minutes it'll take me to tell you about the party, there may be a lot of things you have to do, but basically you have 60 days to do this, so don't panic. Just think of it as a, a project that you're going to produce something. And it's a lot of fun. All the people that are involved uh, will uh, respect you, enjoy you. They will be promoting you to their friends. Uh, so it's, it's for your benefit. It's really a PR situation because you're going to expand your database, get new donors and uh, start pitching your film to those people who can fund your film. So you've got to come out of the closet sometime and start <laughs> pitching. And this is what we do at From the Heart. We have a bi-weekly class for our filmmakers uh, where you can practice your pitch. And filmmakers get on there. Uh, sometimes they've never pitched before, but that's okay. They learn, uh, every time you pitch, you learn. You get closer to the film. But the pitch has to be like embedded in your DNA so you can pitch the Queen of England or the homeless man on the street. You're comfortable talking to anyone at any time about your film. So I know that um, a friend of mine was telling me the story that, that he called ITVS and accidentally got the head guy who answered the phone. And he, he knew his film so well that he pitched the man. And he said, you know, that's a very interesting film. I think you should apply. And actually he won his grant from that phone call and being prepared to pitch never expecting someone that high up to answer a telephone. I guess those days may be gone, but you should always be prepared. So the pitch is important. You're going to show your trailer when you do this funding party. And it's really all for you. And you do not have to make the ask. So you really want to relax and understand from the beginning that somebody else will make the ask for you. You just shine. Let us see your light and talk about yourself and your film and why you're so committed and what everything that you can think of to tell the audience about the benefits of the film. Those are the things we'll cover in the class today. I just want to make sure that we have time to answer your questions. And if we don't get to all of the questions, I promise you, I'll answer them today. Uh, that you can send your questions to info at fromtheheartproductions.com. And Shirley gets that and she and I will take care of you. Most important thing is, yes, it's a lot of information, but it's a fun thing. So Trudy, how oh, good morning. I'm so happy to see you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Trudy came by to see me. I, I'm in Ventura. And uh, so when you're going up and down the highway, you can always let me know. I'll meet you at a coffee shop and we can at least chat and be in person. Stephen from Cleveland, thank you for joining us. 
you'd have a lot of fun at a funding party, but, and you need to bring music in your party when you have one, Stephen. You want to have music there, okay? And get everybody in the right mood. That really pays off. Uh, and Paula is here. Oh, thank you so much, Paula, and for inviting your friends. That's really kind of <laughs> Hi, Paula. You're looking good. You look wonderful. And Zoo, thank you very much. Oh, thank my you. pleasure. My pleasure. I'm so happy a lot of my friends came on and signed thank up because they know they have to do that, right? <laughs> to be successful. It's, it's another uh, way to fund your film, and it's a fun way. That's what it's all about. Exactly. So um, I'm going to read from the teleprompter because there's so many details. I don't want to forget one of them, but um, I'll get this recording up on our website within a couple of days. It'll be under resources and then under film funding. So if you don't get every answer to everything on here, you may have to play it again. That's okay. So the outline for the class today is that I'm going to cover uh, the fundraising house party and how to turn this information into a Zoom party. And Brianne Price will talk to you about being open to receive all that the universe has to give you, because this is really the most important thing. You really have to feel that you deserve this money. You have to talk to the universe and say, okay, I'm putting my life on the line, taking all this time and effort to make this film, and you have to help me. You have to help me bring people in. I'll do the work, but you have to touch their hearts and help me and open people to uh, the, the uh, way I'm making this film and how important it is so that they'll donate. And then that's what Brianna is going to talk to you about, how to open. Because I remember uh, Oprah Winfrey saying one time that the universe had so much more in store for her than she ever imagined. And that's what I want you to believe. It's more than you ever imagined. Okay, so let's get started. Brianne will talk after me and uh, you'll love her. So put your questions in the chat bar and Brianna, Bree and I will both answer them. So why house parties? Well, because they're fun for everybody involved and they bring in money. And if you need money in the next 60 days, it's a very good idea for you to consider this. There are many details, and so the money is in the details. And I've been to a lot of funding parties, and I've helped plan successful funding parties. So the information I'm giving you is firsthand. I know it works. This has been a popular way to raise money in the political realm for years, and now filmmakers have made it a viable way to raise money, and you do not have to pay this back. It's really a wonderful way to publicize your film, meet people, spread the word, and raise money for your film with new donors. Now, for a Zoom party, you need the same things as a house party. Remember that often people go to a house party just to see the inside of someone's home. They want to know how it's decorated, what the furniture looks like, pictures, art. So for a Zoom meeting, you would follow the instructions for a house party and start with the hostess. You want to show her home to the audience via cell phone. And this can be done by someone in her household with a minimum of training. So your job is to invite people and get them on the Zoom platform for the party. The filmmaker can be on from their home and the subject of the documentary can be online or the cast and the crew of a feature. So make the Zoom party so that donors can be inside of the donor's home. Now for this online party, you need to use the same outline as I'm giving you as if it was in a home. And I'm going to suggest that you consider getting Maury Warshawski's wonderful little book, The Fundraising House Party. I put the address to it in the chat room because it's worth its weight in gold. Now, the first thing is finding your host because that's the most important thing. And 
And this whole party really depends on their support of you and their commitments to the party. So now the first thing you need from the host is a lot of love. They need to love you, love the project. And the second thing that you need from the host before anything else happens is they have to make a commitment to the project. They have to make a donation. What you need the host to do is stand up at the party and say, I have donated to this film or I'm writing a check tonight to this project. So your host must be fully committed. They have to open their address book and invite their friends. This is crucial because this is what drives the party, being social and social pressure. And they need to be willing to personally invite their friends. And they need to volunteer the use of their home. So this is very personal to ask them to bring in their friends and do it in their home. But it's the key to the fundraising house party. Someone loves you enough to open their home and bring in the friends, support you in your film. And this is why I think this is a really good time of year to do it because the weather is great. And if you uh, have a backyard or even a front yard where you can put some tables and chairs and bring people together, uh, depending upon how we are with COVID, that's a wonderful way. People love to be outdoors at parties. And so between now and Christmas, you have to realize is when people give the most money because usually at this time of year, they know exactly where they stand financially. And if they have money to pay the taxes, why wouldn't they want to give you that money rather than pay for taxes? It means a lot to them to know that you have a tax deductible donation for them. Because, and I highly recommend that you do have a physical sponsor for this. So many people go just to see the inside of the donor's home. So remember that one. So the hostess doesn't have to do anything more than those two things. Open up her home to you and open up her database and invite her friends. Now they can volunteer to do other things, but if not, you can do the rest because typically the donor will take care of the food and the drinks. But if they don't want to, then you'll need to do this. And the donor would normally send out the invitations, but you can do this for them. And Mari's book has ideas on what to say in your invitation. It's really well written in that respect. You definitely want donors to know to bring their checkbook or their credit card and be prepared to donate to your film. You can help them create the invitation. And it would be great if the host volunteers to do the follow-up calls after the party, because someone has to call those who did not donate, because 30% of your party money will come in after the party. And I can vouch for that as, as a uh, fiscal sponsor for people who've had parties. A lot of times the money comes in afterwards, because sometimes people need to ask their partner if they can donate and how much they can donate and they go home and talk about it and sometimes and then they'll write you a check afterwards. And some people have to think about it and some people need to decide on an amount to give. And sometimes people need a little nudging and that's why you need to make these phone calls. Uh, and the caller has to say something like, did you have a good time at the party? And of course, they'll say, yes. Did you like the filmmaker? Oh, yes, he was great. Then you could say, well, you did not donate to the film. And I wonder if you're able to do that now. And if not, can I help you? And this works. This usually will get them to make a decision. Now, let's go back to the party. So to find someone to give you a party, some filmmakers review who has donated to their film and they call and invite this prior donor to do the fundraising house party because they know this person fully supports them. So consider that, look at back at some of your dedicated donors, all right? And then start talking to them. 
the devil is in the details, says Maury Warshawski. So to make a party really successful, you need to do a lot of things. If you miss a detail, you can miss out on the money. So the key to making the party work is to have enough of the right people in the room. What helps is that the host will gather together a small committee of other like-minded people who will also do two things. One, they will invite their friends to the party and they will arrange for the evening, taking care of the decorations and the food and they can help send out the invitations. They might even assist in making the follow-up calls. And they are there that night to mill around and talk to people. And that is really important. You, you must have shields at the party. Fil filmmakers, other filmmakers are friends who know how dedicated you are. Because I was at a film funding party and I finally, I got tired. So I found a place to sit down and I sat next to this gentleman who was retired and he was watching the video. And she was making a film on neon. So I was watching the film and I said, oh my gosh, she went to Las Vegas. I didn't realize, oh, she's in Paris. Wow, she did a lot of traveling for this film. And he started asking me questions because he had no idea what went on behind the scenes to make that film. And when I explained to him the amount of money that she had to raise and the places she went and all that, <laughs> he became the biggest donor of the night. So keep that in mind. Your, your mm. friends, family, and other filmmakers can help sell you. It's all about you because people give money to people. So think about that. You really need people in the party or even in the chat box. If you're doing it online, I would break people into groups and let them talk to each other and have someone in that group that knows you, loves you, and understands how dedicated you are. Because the whole thing to get people to give money to you is that they know you, like you, trust you, and respect you. And so people who are just coming in to meeting you need to have that reassurance from someone who is close to you. So let's get back to the film party. So to be on the host committee, you have to make a donation. So one of the beautiful things about the party is that you raise a lot of money before the party even happens. This is one of the things I love about a house party. The host is going to give you money. Everyone on the host committee is going to make a donation. So before the party happens, you already have donations. And when you send out invitations, 60 to 70% of the people you invite are not going to come. And a percentage of these people are going to send you money. Really? Yes, because you included a note with the invitation that says, I'm sorry, I can't come, but here's my donation. So you actually make money before the doors of the party open. And one filmmaker that I work with through From the Heart lived in Washington, DC. And she gave donation cards at her house parties and the donations kept coming in for months afterwards. So sometimes people need time to make a decision or to get the funds they want to give you. These donation cards with stamped return envelopes pay off for you. So. I say if you're having a house party, you have these in every chair and wherever the food is and the drinks. So they take them with them and that will pay off for you, believe me. <clears throat> I suggest you put them on the chairs and in your Zoom event, you can put your credit card link in the chat bar and you can take credit cards at the party. Now the outline for the party is one, you need to have the host of the party speak about you because, again, we want to know how trustworthy you are and why this person is supporting you in the film. This is of utmost importance to us because we're going to give you money and we have to know from another person that they like you and trust you. And donors want to know who is this person and why should I give them money? So they need to hear that from the host of the party. 
This is the first thing the host has to do for you. They have to get up and open the party, talk about you, uh, and you do not ask for donations. You simply tell us who you are, why you're making the film, and you sell us the sizzle. Where will we see this film? What are the benefits? What's the story, right? What is this film going to do for society? Is it uncovering a hidden fault we need to expose? And most importantly, everybody wants to know what's in it for me. Always keep that in mind when you're asking for money in any way at all. What's in it for me? So are you giving titles or rolling credits? Did you raise some goodies to give with certain donations? Because some filmmakers get donations like wine, facials, weekends at the Hilton, and they give these for certain dollar donations. And you can call these organizations, try to find a wine company that is local to you and a hotel that makes uh, that has rooms available. But, and all you have to do is you talk to the PR person and tell them how you will give them a credit in the film, promote them on your website and all of that stuff and either get it free or for a small amount. And you can give these for a high dollar donation. And women love this. So gear your gifts towards the women because I've seen it where the guys bring the women to the party and the guys are saying, okay, well, let's donate. And the women are saying, yes, but first I have to see what the gifts are. Is there something in here for me? And of course, that's what we all like to know. So make the gifts towards the women. The guys will donate the money to get whatever it is for their why for their loved one. Now we need compelling information to move us to donate. So we're remembering that some of these people will need to discuss it with their others. You want to be sure to give them on the night of the party, the sticky story so they can remember your pitch. Now that's something emotional, shocking, concrete, credible, wrapped in a compelling story that they can remember. And I put a link to how to write a sticky story in the chat bar. So you might want to make a note of that. Because these people have to go home and pitch someone else. So you need to make sure that they have a story that they can remember. So I know this is a lot of information and I promise you we'll get a copy of this class on our website in a few wow. days and you can hear it again. And this information is also part of a larger three hour class called How to Fund Your Film. And that uh, information's in the chat bar too. So if you need more information on film funding, I think I've got everything in that class uh, that would help you. So uh, let's go back to the outline for the event. You have to save time for viewing the trailer and talking to the audience. You need to have a dynamic trailer that makes me want to donate. And I've seen trailers that really make you cry because you're totally connected to the material. And this is what works. When you touch my heart, I reach for my pocketbook. All of us do. So this helps when you give us an emotional connection to your story. Showing your trailer is the most important part of the night. And the filmmaker does this. And now it's really time for the filmmaker to shine. She or he takes questions from the audience. And you might have a few questions planted with some of the members of the host committee. So you are sure that they are asked. And then you can really get into the heart of the film. You want to find out what the audience is interested in. And next, you need to listen very carefully. Use your focus because this is where you can connect to your potential donors. You want to know what part of the story resonated with them and why. You want to know because it may be new information for you. You may have found a niche audience, a new one for your film. 
So listen closely to what they say and answer them. This is a priority to make them feel comfortable with donating. Parties without this question and answer time do not do as well financially. And I know this from firsthand experience. So here are some more successful party tips. At a successful funding party for a from the heart physically sponsored filmmaker, the filmmaker had a big board made at FedEx. It was about four feet long and four feet high. And it started with executive producer and a big long line. It said $5,000. And then it had a line to write the name of the person. And the second line was associate producer, $2,500. And there were two lines. Now, the point here is you can change these numbers to anything you want. Uh, he knew the dollar value of these people and what they could afford to donate. So uh, he, and he also offered uh, credits, big credits in the film that you don't have to offer. You can have for, offer a rolling credit or you can put 30 names on a card. There are a lot of ways to give something back. But this man wanted the cash and he was willing to give away um, for the executive producer, then the associate producer. And then next, he had a line that said $1,000 and he had five lines under that to put names and then $500 with a lot of names and he didn't go any lower. So when I got there to help him with the party, I thought I was a guest and he said, oh no. He said, we have to get the $5,000 donation first, Miss Dean, because I'm not going to take any money until I get that $5,000. Wow. I said, uh, you, you're going to be that strict. And he said, yes, I am. So I said, who's going to ask for that? And he said, you are. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wow, that's short notice. See? So I said, okay. So I started thinking about him. Now, I'd known him for years. He was sponsored by us. I mean, he's a passionate man. So I started thinking about what I could say about him. So I, I stood in front of the audience and I just used my knowledge. And I said, you know, this is a wonderful, this is a really nice man. Uh, he's a good father. He's a wonderful husband, terrific salesman. He's a dedicated filmmaker. And then I outlined the benefits of the film. So uh, how to get the donation was all I could focus on. So I said, truthfully, I've been working on this film for three years. And if I get an associate producer credit, I'll be really happy. <clears throat> but tonight, one time only, I'm going to offer a executive producer credit, which will be at the beginning of the film for $5,000, one night only. And then I stopped, I said nothing else because that's what you have to do. When you make an ask, the next person to talk has to be the donor. You have to give them time to think. They, they have a lot of information you've just given them about the film and the filmmaker. And so they need to think, can I afford this? Should I do it? What's my husband going to say, etc. So I didn't say anything. And I waited. And then all of a sudden, this woman <laughs> raised her hand and said, that's my, that's my credit. I want that. <laughs> she got it. Uh, she was so excited. Uh, it was like she was going to grab it before I took it away. And that's what you want to build is this feeling that you're really lucky to be part of this film. So that was a blessing for, every, for me and for uh, John Gear, the Golistan, the filmmaker, he was Persian. Uh, so the point here is that don't be afraid to ask for what you want uh, because they know that's why they're there. They're there to find out about you and they brought their checkbook or their credit card. So he did an excellent job of getting a lot of high net worth individuals to this party. He is Persian. And I met the first, the Persian doctor who did the first hand transplant. Okay. And he was there with his wife and it was, and his mother 
So it was that kind of party. You could walk up and talk to anyone and you felt very comfortable. And uh, John Gere had all of these uh, three beautiful women walking around with food and hors d'oeuvres and filling your drink. And it was a great party. So that's what you want. If you're going to have a party, make it so that people are really comfortable and well cared for. And you could walk up and introduce yourself to anyone at this party. They all were friendly. And he had producers from Hollywood. He had a bank owner. Uh, so it was a nice party and it raised some good money for him. So remember that once you go to all this work to get the party, don't be afraid to ask for what you want. They know why they're at the party. So be direct and be honest and let them see your heart. Open up and tell people uh, who you are and why you're making this film. That's what they want to know. And this is why house parties are successful because they are a self-correcting environment. So what I mean is that uh, if they don't want to give you money, they just don't come to the party. And that's why 70 to 80% of the people who show up should give you money if you do it right. People are there to find out who you are and what this film is about. And they brought their credit card or their checkbook and they are ready. So it's up to you to close them. Now for your funding party, you need to pay attention to the invitation uh, to the list that you're inviting and their income because you want to request your donation amounts to be in line with their income. So set your personal goal based on their, this average income. And that's why many people ask their lawyers, doctors, dentists, or any high paid professional to have the house party for them because they know these people have the income to donate generously. So what I wanted you to think about now is what is your comfort level, right? What amount of money do you normally give to charity? Because this is what you need to figure out about the people coming to the party. What is their comfort level? We all have a comfort level. I bet you usually write the same amount of checks to most of the people you give donations to, because I do. I have a comfort level. Uh, so if there's any way that you can find what their comfort level is for giving, then you know what to ask for. Finding that level is the key to film funding without the party even knowing what people can give you can really enhance your film funding. Because let's, I see so many of these checks coming in for other people, you'd be surprised. Um, some donors won't even write $10,000, they'll write 9999. Uh, some people give 13000 So if you ask that person for 10, they'd write you a check because it's within their comfort zone. But if you knew that 13 was their number, you could get $3,000 more. And if you ask for 20, they would say no, because you're outside their comfort level. So this is a very important aspect for raising money from anybody. You, uh, maybe you can Google some of the people that are invited and see what their income level is or check them out uh, through the network because you really wanna know what they can afford. Now, we use a company called We Did It for our film funding and We Did It to have the analytics and they will let you put in a person's name and they will tell you what uh, a lot about them, where they work, what if they know their income, they tell you that, if they own their home, et cetera, et cetera. So these are things that you really need to know when you're film funding. How much is this person worth? The main question is what can they comfortably donate? Because that's what you want to ask for. Now, think about this. You can find another host for the second party from the first party. So don't be afraid to ask for this too. Everyone is usually having a wonderful time and feeling philanthropic. So they should respond well to your request to support you with another party. So in the chat bar, there is a link to an interview I had with Maury Warshawski who wrote the little crowdfunding book. 
And so you may want to listen to that interview. There's a lot of detail in there too. You need 60 days or more to plan this party. And in, if you've got my book, The Art of Film Funding, second edition, there's a list of 42 things that you can do for a fundraising party. And usually the, I've written them the first thing, second, third, fourth, like that. It's a, just an outline of what you wanna do. It's a checklist. Uh, okay, so that's what I have for the moment and I'm ready to answer any questions. So uh, what have we got in the chat bar that I can answer? Okay, Carol, I'll, I'll take the questions. The first question is, is it ethical or legal to do more than one funding platform at a time? Uh, okay, funding platform, you mean like if you had Indiegogo and, uh, in, uh, and uh, Kickstarter at the same time. Yes, it's okay to do that. But you, you, uh, now, <laughs> here's another decision that people have to make. Do they, where do they donate? And why have you got two campaigns going? It's confusing. So I don't recommend that you do that because usually you need everybody in your database to go to one place and you have a goal and you want to hit that goal. That's what I recommend. Okay, thank you. That question came from Paula. This next question is from Raj and it's how viable is it to get funding for filmmakers from Asia? Is it realistic? Uh, in America to get fundraising in, in America? No, in Asia. Of funding, well, that's up to you. Uh, you would, of course, want to get close to your doctor, lawyer, dentist, someone that has money, that has a good list of people in their database that they can invite to a party. Um, now, a lot of times people from out of the country would like to raise money in the United States. Well, the point is that in on the crowdfunding places, people don't just troll around looking to give you money. You really have to raise money in America to the people you know in America. Don't expect people to find you. You have to cultivate uh, a following over here. You might be able to do that uh, through trailers or information on your uh, product that you're making on your film. But uh, then you could raise money in America if you were interested. But you have to find the people who will donate to your film. Okay. Uh, this next question is from Angie, and then I'll pass it over to Brianne. Uh, basically, she's asking is, we're looking at a hybrid combo of in-person and Zoom Google Meet for people. Also, what are your thoughts of combining fundraising house party with focus groups so people feel invested and hopeful and offer good ideas on the clips we share? This is fabulous. This is actually the way to go. Um, there's a filmmaker in Texas that I worked with. I used to teach in Texas a lot. And so she invited me to one of her events where she brought in the people who had funded her to date, showed them a clip and said, what do you think about it? And she got feedback from them. And then she asked them for another donation. And of course they helped. They wanted to be part of the film. They came out in droves. The place was packed. It was a film about uh, Girl Scouts. Uh, and so, yes, keep your people close to you. The main thing is, like when you do a campaign like a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo, those people are part of your life now and you need to treat them really carefully and make sure that you send them updates because they gave you money. You said, I'm making a film, they gave you money. You need to follow through uh, every three to four months, no longer, with a little newsletter that says, everything is wonderful, I have done this and that and I'm uh, going to do this and that next. So they are attached. And when you need money, you ask for it because they're already invested in you. And one of the women that I worked with, 
was about to um, send her update to her Kickstarter list. And she was working with me in the angel program and said, I'm really worried because I haven't done all the things I promised I would do. And so I don't know what to tell them. I'm months behind on my projection where I would be. And I said, just tell them the truth. Quote, um, uh, uh, the filmmaker, Orson Welles, and say, I spend 95% of my time raising money and 5% making the film. So I'm behind and I apologize. And that got her a phone call from a man who said, just how much do you need? And she said, 130,000. Now this is a guy she didn't know, uh, but he was wealthy and this is what you want. Well, he mailed her a check for the 130, got connected with her and helped her finish the film and put in more money. So you don't always know the financial uh, status of the people who are donating to you through these online platforms. So they are friends, they're people, they love you, treat them like gold. They're your audience. So I hope that answers it. Okay, there are more questions, but I'll let uh, Brianne uh, jump in and then we'll continue with the questions. Very interesting questions coming up. Okay. Brianne, are you there? I am, Nahid, thank you very much. And I really love this method. It's been tried and true for a long time. I mean, there's been Tupperware parties, home decor parties. People have a party for everything. And now that people have had a year of getting familiar with Zoom, I think it'll be a lot easier to set these up. So what I wanted to talk about is receiving. You know, one of the things that happened when The Secret came out is there was a lot of problems and people misunderstood about asking. And after a year of the secret, they came up with the secret syndrome. And what was happening was psychologists had all these people who did the secret. They said, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire. And then they went and sat in their lawn chair for a year and then nothing happened. And then they got really upset because nothing happened. So it's about asking for it and receiving. It's like you ask and then you open the door and you step in. So I'm going to repeat a little bit of what Carol says, but from an energetic standpoint. So the first thing with all of this is consciously setting yourself up for success and not failure. And what can happen a lot of the times is we do self-sabotage. So it's getting into the energy. So if you're going to be doing one of these, I would suggest that you set it up as soon as you can and you every day you give it energy because you are the film, you are this project. It's your energy that will really cause this to be successful. So the more you can do that, the better. So it's like never waiting to the last moment because you don't want chaos going into this. The truth is right now, people are very, very energetically sensitive. People feel energy before they even see you or hear your words. So the more that you can get the details confirmed, and a lot of creative people don't like details, but this is a really important one where you get your details and you get them confirmed. And I am also a fan of confirming details periodically with your host, especially if you're going to be planning it out two months in advance, is really, you know, confirm and make sure everything's okay, check in with them, because you just don't want any nasty surprises. And so this is number one. And then the second thing is getting everything in a row. And as Carol said, you got your log line to where you can say your log line in your sleep. You got your log line. You got your pitch. You got your sticky story. You got your fabulous trailer. And you got your why. And I think the why is really important because of everything that has happened, people are very, very hungry for connection. So anything and everything you can do that would allow people to connect to you and your story and your film, the better. Um, I'm also a big fan of humor stories. 
and having a little bit of humorous antidotes because humor really connects with people and it shows your true personality and it can really get in. Another thing that you really need to have with this too is intentions. Sometimes people approach these things, they say, well, I'll just see what happens. Well, I think the universe needs direction on what you're looking for, because if you just let somebody else choose, you may not get what you want. So a great way of setting intentions is like I receive $50,000 for my film from this party. And as Carol said, you, you know, you play with the amount, but that's just an example. So I receive it from this party. Now, when you do the intentions, you have to set the energy that there's no expectations or judgments because you don't want to force and you don't want to create any extra energy but this is a request and an open-ended request of at least fifty thousand dollars out to the universe and then you pay attention to how does it feel if this is something new it may not feel real it may not feel like there's any energy so at that point, start talking to it. And I'm a big fan of talking out loud to things because so much goes on in our head. The more we can verbalize things like this, the better. So you can talk to this and change it. Look, universe, I know we've never done this before, but I know we can do this. I know we can co-create. I'm going to choose to do this and let's do it. And just put that wonder and enthusiasm out there. Now, when you also start moving into new energies, what happens is old childhood stuff comes up and that's coming up for people in general because it's stuff that needs to go. So what could happen when you start doing this intention is you'll hear, oh, that'll never happen. You're not lucky. You're, you don't do that. You're not worthy. All of that crap that might be a parent talking, a teacher talking or whatever. You also need to acknowledge that. Say, no, uh, uh, no, that's old energy. You're not me. You go and you go now and you throw it out to the ends of the universe. So you do whatever you need to do to get really comfortable with this intention. And so you ask for other things too, because this is also a great time to look at where you are with greed. We are in a space right now where everybody's fearful of being seen as greedy. And I don't like that. And what I was told was that if you believe in greed, you also believe in lack. And lack is not a good thing. And lack is not true. You know, the truth is there's tons of money out there. You can get money from a great place. So there's no shortage of money. It's just a shortage of distribution. There's really no shortage of food zillions of tons of food get wasted each year just because it doesn't get in the hands of the people who could use it. So let go of being greedy and ask for everything that you would like. You know, one of the things that I like with these kind of things is I am fearless and asking for and receiving what I desire to have. That is a wonderful intention. And looking at it also too is when you don't ask for enough, I believe that it's doing a disservice to God, the universe, whoever you believe, because the universe is a creation machine. And by not asking, you're not allowing it to co-create with you. And it really wants to. Now I have had a lot of goals through my life and I've really played with this. And what I have noticed is that when I act small, when I ask small, I don't get what I want. But when I ask for bigger or something totally outrageous, that opens the door for the big things to come in. So play with that. So that could be things like I receive 100 new people for my mailing list. I receive 100 new followers from this party. Two big social media influencers follow me and promote my film to their followers and i think those are the kinds of things to ask for and ask for day one for these things and that can start getting the energy building and asking for the party to be wonderfully memorable 
I'm a really big fan of these things because it can really set the intention to be in the flow. And I am a fan of surprise money. I think everybody every day, at least once a day, should be asking for surprise money. It's like, all right, universe, what surprise money can show up today? And I have heard wonderful things from that. One of the things that also seems to be up for people right now, and this might stop you from doing something like this, is performance anxiety. One of the things that I hear is like, well, you know, I have performance anxiety. I can't perform in front of people. I can't do this and, and all of that. Well, I would invite you to maybe reframe that a little bit because how I look about it is you're not performing. What you're doing is you're empowering. And by doing this, you're empowering yourself as a filmmaker. You're empowering your future. You're empowering so many great things that you would like to create. And if you can go with that from that space of power, that will really, really help with the energy and moving things and creating things beyond what you think you can create. Now, the day of the party, or actually, I would say two days before the party, you know, keep your energy clean. Probably a lot of you meditate or you have energy clearing practices. It's a great thing to do that and to keep your energy as clear as you possibly can the day of the party. Don't get into fights with people or arguments or, you know, any crazy energy. Be in the flow. Be in that flow of that $50,000. Feel it and really have it find its way to you. Now, if God forbid something happens, and we all know in these technology times, things do happen, you start talking to the energy. And this is what I do anytime there's any problems with, with classes or anything. If something happens, I talk to it and I say, okay, this stops and this stops now. This is clear. This is a clear channel. This is a clear energy. And I put that out. The second thing I do is like, all right, universe, if anything in me is causing this, I let it go because it stops now. And usually those two clear a lot of issues. And if it doesn't, there's something else. But it's all about reestablishing your power so you can receive more. And this will help get a lot of issues out of you. Because as I said, when you're doing this, a lot of old hidden beliefs, you know, we are sponges for our parents and our support structure around us when we're little. And when we move into new spaces of energy, that stuff often gets revealed. So you're kind to yourself, but you say, no, uh, -uh that's old stuff. I let it go. Now, when you finish, first of all, when you finish the party, when it's all over and done, you pat yourself on the back <laughs> because you did it. And just realize that a lot of people don't. They say they want to, but they don't. So pat yourself on the back. Make sure there's no negative self-talk. Because a lot of times we will beat ourselves up over what we did or did not do. Don't do that and make a really concerted effort not to do this. Now go over the events of the party. And this is where it's really fun to journal and write things down. And instead of saying, I should have blah, 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 say, okay, next time I will, and then write out your intention. Because what that will do is get that energy in your field and have it become automatic. And no judgments on results. As what Carol said, not all the money comes that day or within 24 hours, because there's a lot of things that happen. And that's awesome. So you have to just keep it open. And what we don't ever realize is that we affect the energy so much that we won't know a lot of the impact that we had. And as Carol said, you could be getting money for six months to a year on down the road. But if you start judging it, judging you, judging the party, you'll stop the energy and you do not need to do that. This is also a good time to look at your judgments of rich people. 
there's a couple of people who I follow and one of their big things is poverty mindset a lot of times springs from judgments of rich people. And she believes people have them. Now, I thought I had cleared up a one, but I found one this past week. And, and these judgments can be very, very sneaky. And I like to invest in culture, which is basically um, comic books, classic cars, Birkin bags. There's um, several different companies that they'll buy them and then you buy stock in them. So it's a legitimate thing. You make money by selling the stock or getting buyouts. Well, one of them had an NFT, a um, cyberpunk NFT. And if those of you know NFTs, it's one of the big things. They're really hot right now. And cyberpunk is one of the original ones and it's worth a lot of money. Well, they did a surprise drop on it, and which means that they didn't tell anybody, and so everybody jumped in. So when I saw the notice, I jumped right in, and within 15 seconds, I purchased shares, but it was already sold out. And I looked at it, and like, wait a minute. And then what I realized is, what they had done is they had let the special people, some of their specialized, probably very rich investors in, they snagged up all the shares. And then by the time the thing became available and the notice became out, no shares were left. And it really made me mad. And I started complaining like, no, this is unfair. This is wrong. Like, okay, wait a minute. You, th this is just a belief that you cannot have because this is complaining and it's too strong. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm choosing to be one of these people. I'm choosing to be one of the special people. I'm choosing to have luxury. I am choosing to be one of these people who gets these special access. And then a couple of days later, a Super Mario's Nintendo game come up for sale. And I'm not kidding when I say this, um, a record was just set a Super Mario's Nintendo game from the 80s selling for $2 million. And I am not kidding. So it's very hot right now. So I knew that this was going to become available. So I was in my intention when it came, the shares came up, I jumped on it. And within 15 seconds, I got my shares. And within five seconds after I got my shares, it was sold out. But it just goes to show the intention and being in the energy and just choosing differently and looking at judgments of rich people or people with resources. I've opened it up, people with extra resources. That can really help you become the energy that you would like to become. So it all boils down to you allowing yourself to receive and allowing yourself to let go everything that doesn't allow you to receive. Thank you. Very good, Brianne. What you are saying is that uh, I want to let everybody know you're not asking for a donation. You are ask, you are inviting people to join you in the making of the film. It's an invite. And mm -hmm. if they don't, somebody else will, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's part of your intentions. And yeah. yes, poverty, poverty mindset springs from a lot of different things. But one of the ones that we can control and we can know about is our beliefs from rich about rich people. So that's why I mentioned it, you know, getting in because you want to receive from the people. And so you want a clear channel. So clear channel yes. is important. Thank you so much, Brian. So Nahid, any questions on the chat bar? Wow, it's almost an hour. Time flew by. Yeah, there are a few more questions and the ones we cannot address, we'll definitely email them to everyone. Okay. Okay, so here's one of the question and this is from uh, Todd Roberts. He's saying right now, and I think you addressed this question, during this time of a pandemic, you know, it's difficult to have house parties. I would imagine everyone would need to be vaccinated, tested. So, how do we encourage having uh, house parties virtually using Zoom, I would imagine, or Google? Zoom, yeah, well, whichever one you want. Actually, you can even use uh, the uh, one of the platforms. There are tons of them. So it's not the platform, it's 
uh, the fact that you have a Zoom party, you can then have people all across the United States and around the world. Uh, you just follow all the rules I set out before, all the tips or guidelines, whatever you want to call them, but they work. Use those, but uh, do it online and, you, and make it fun, all right? That's what it's all about, make it fun. And because you are a filmmaker, I'm quite sure you're extremely creative. Just put your creativity into it and take what I've said as a, a guideline and then create from there. Okay. Is, uh, the next question is from Hina Ali. And uh, I think you may have addressed this. She's asking, is it okay for a filmmaker who's based in New York to do a fundraising party in Arizona and Florida? As long as you have someone in Arizona who will open their home or Florida, absolutely. Uh, they would be honored. You'd probably get a lot of people to come out and meet you because you are from New York. Okay. And then Catherine Marsh is asking, do you experience more fundraising success as the founder of a nonprofit organization or can a for-profit production company director raise just as much funding to make? any indie film? Well, um, I have to say, I, I don't have any experience with that, but I don't see why you can't raise it if you have your own production company and you want to have a party. And see, people want to know specifically, what are you going to use this money for? So if you're really honest and say, OK, um, we have a production that we're working on and we're raising 20,000 and that 20,000 will do A, B, C, and that's what we want the money for. And here's what we're, what we're giving you. You get a, a role in credit or you get to come on the set and you get to meet the actors or whatever. Always have something equal value that you're giving them for donations. All right, so okay. yes, I would think you'd do quite well. Okay. Stephanie has a question and she's curious about how to go about fundraising when you have already shot a portion of the film. Currently, she's self-funding a film and would like to understand how to shape up her funding ask to cover the costs that have already been invested. Okay, um, now, first of all, when you go after grants, I'll tell you right now, you, you never say this is what I spent, and this is what I want recouped, because seldom will they allow that. They'll take you from here going forward. And when you go to your funding party, let's say you have a funding party, you show them what you've done, and surely you're not finished with it, so you ask for money to move forward. You're going to have to realize that you want to pay yourself a salary. So all money coming in, you should take a percentage of that and start paying yourself now. Because the further down the road you get, if you haven't been paying yourself, you may never recoup that money. It's hard to do to go after money that's already come in that you invested. But you do use that in your pitch, saying that you are an investor in the film. You've put in X dollars. That helps. But I would uh, make a deal with yourself that uh, 25, 30% of everything that comes in is for you to keep you alive and well. Okay. Another question. Uh, please share more about finding the comfort level of donation amount. All sources and questions to ask to get that intelligence. Um, okay. You need someone, uh, reach out to all your friends and find out who's the best researcher amongst your friends and then give them the names of some of the people that you know are who have donated up to this date and see what the financial condition is of these people and see if you can find uh, people who have the ability to write you a $5,000 check and it not be difficult for them. That's what you want to do. Um, but again, it's putting yourself out in the right place to meet people with money. That's what I went into in detail in the three hour class. Um, you may have to uh, join a nonprofit 
and maybe maybe you're doing a film about some animals you could you might join the SPCA and donate locally you might be next to Doris Day or someone else who's got money because when wealthy people put their time into where the heart is and so you might want to go to um uh, the any group all of these groups that are out there, you know, the Elf Club, the Veterans of Foreign Wars Clubs, all of those clubs have people as a group. So find what groups there are available to you that are in line with the product in your film or with the story in your film. That's where you want to go. And Toastmasters is another wonderful place to join. There are wealthy people there. And they really teach you how to speak. So you would be learning something, meeting people, and pitching your film at the same time. Uh, if you uh, graduated from college, you might go to a, your college events if they have them, so that you can talk to the alumni and tell them about your film and raise money through them. OK. Uh, here's another question from Paula. Uh, she's asking about American film funding platforms going to representative international donors. Uh, the platforms are in different language. What she's asking is if you translate these languages, would you want to split any focus? If you translate the languages, would you what? Okay, let me read the question. Are, are the American film funding platforms going to representative international donors? platforms in different languages no if you uh, talk, yeah. uh, you're talking about indiegogo kickstarter uh gofundme none of these platforms do any marketing for you they do not bring you any people even seed and spark which i really love they say no you you get 98 percent of the money from the people that are in your database there's no one out there trolling around looking to give money and none of these platforms do any mailings that they put you in. I was a partner with Indiegogo for eight years, and I only saw one person that got into an Indiegogo email list. Um, and I, it, it does happen, but it is so rare. One time in all those years, no, don't expect it. You have to realize you have to take your crowd to the crowdfunding party. Sorry, Paula, but that's how it works. But but we do get international donations. Yeah, we get international donations all the time. So yes, if you're using what our platforms, the We Did It platform that we offer our physically sponsored filmmakers, they take money from, I don't know, 60 some odd countries. So that's possible for you. Okay. Uh uh, Prima, she's asking, how would you do all this on a Zoom party? I live in a very small community and do not know the HNI people. Well, um, Prima, you have to get, join some group or um, maybe uh, we have to think about this. Uh, so you need to call me and we'll talk about it because we have to look at what's near you uh, and or what's online that is aligned with your film and how to get into those groups online. I think that's where we have to start. People who love to meditate or uh, highly educated, uh, who are uh, spiritual, that's your market. So. Uh, we have to start searching for places online that uh, cater to these people so you can join them and become uh, friendly and then start talking about your film. Okay. I think we covered most of the question. Okay. Maybe open it up to the audience. If anyone has a question, you can unmute yourself and ask directly to Carol. Okay, Jing. Uh, go ahead. You are on. Jing Jing. I yeah. Go ahead. Hi, my question is to Brianne. What if you have like fears or subconscious fears about receiving or accepting because you were sort of punished for it when you were a kid? And even though 
I've been going to therapy and trying to sort of heal it. It's still coming up unexpectedly. So. I absolutely. And that's a really good question. Um, what I believe and what I have found, it's dealing with the traumas because a lot of times the traumas of, you know, the exact time when you were punished is still hanging out live in your field. Okay, so what I like to do is you can find some sort of trauma response to get those out individually. What I like to do is I spend every day saying, okay, all the traumas from being punished for having money, you know what, I'm going to bring them up today. And then you feel them come up in your body and then you allow them to dissipate. It's like, you know what, your old energy, I am safe, I'm letting this go. And then you can let it dissolve and that starts helping. Um, I also believe too is when the trauma comes up, you say, no, you're an old energy. I am safe now. And then you start pushing that energy out to the ends of the universe. And yeah. what that will help, that will help get the charge off of it. Because what you want to do is because you've got so much charge. And unfortunately, and this sounds terrible, sometimes therapy only creates more charge on it because you're talking about it. Um, I trained for two years in energy psychology. And what I found is after the two years of training, because we were in it all the time, it's like it was more real than it was when I was a kid. So, so basically, well, I think, sorry, so I think that's called flooding. It's where your like your emotions mm -hmm. are too overwhelming. So I'm not talking yeah. about like necessarily flooding, but how do you push it to the edge of the universe? How do you do that? Oh, you, you just visualize it. Um, and what you do is like, okay, you, you break it all up and then you just visualize pushing it out to the edges of the universe. You just watch it go. And of course, there are no edges of the universe, so it just keeps going. But that is a very powerful technique I find, and a lot of my clients do it too, is anything you don't want, it's like, nope, I'm done with you, whoosh, and just push it out to the edge of the universe. And what that does is it gets it out of your field, because what you want to do is get it out of your field. And I get what you're saying about the flooding, but sometimes the flooding stuff, it's running subconsciously down in your field. You might get it out consciously, but it's still creating havoc in your field. So what I think, and I'm a big fan of talking to the universe out loud, saying, nope, I'm done with this. This goes, whoosh, and pushing it out. Um, a really powerful technique that I love, and I think this will work for you too, is when you find edges. So basically what we have been brainwashed in is that we're separate from God. We're separate from the universe. So if you sit in your energy, you close your eyes, and then you push your energy out, you flow your energy out, and, you, and it flows out to the edges of the city, the state, the planet and to the edge of the universe. And what you're looking for is like, all right, show me the edges of where I end and God begins. And you shouldn't find any edges because there's no beginning and ending. And what that does is it starts reinforcing in your energy that you are of God. You still have that God energy. Now, if you feel anything, because sometimes there will be old energy things in your field you don't need to figure out what it is you just like okay you know what you're not real i'm letting you go and you kind of just sit there for a couple of minutes and you dissolve it and then you continue flowing out and what i found is after a couple of weeks of doing that my energy got so much stronger i was able to clear an awful lot of older traumas because they were just not hanging around in my field anymore because i wasn't separate from god so I do that every day. And I think that would really help because the thing is you're very energetically sensitive. You're an empath, right? So the more you can do boundaries on things, because if you don't have boundaries, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference between what's your energy and what other people's energy is too. Does that make sense? Perfect. Yeah, just the okay. idea, sorry, just the idea of where you end and where God or the universe starts. That's so, that's awesome. Thank you. Yes, it is awesome. Thank you, Brianne. That's you're welcome. Okay.
uh, Carol, I know we are above the hour, but there's one question and then I'll leave the email on the chat for anyone to ask, uh, to email us any questions after we uh, finish. But this is interesting too. It's from Marissa. And she says, thank you, Brianne and Carol for offering this information. I did a 40 minute short film that was never released because I was told by an entertainment lawyer, I was not able to release to the public. Can I show this film in a private party setting? Yes, obviously you don't have all of the releases you need, but you definitely should be able to show it to a private group. You can't put it up online or any place like that, um, but in a, in a group, you're safe. Oh, but I see Basil Moore has his hand up. So can you unmute Basil? Okay. Basil I did. Is... Hi, okay. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me well? Yes. Uh, first of all, Brianne, that was amazing uh, uh, description of how the energy flows and how you protect it and how you speak out loud to the universe to create the intention in order for uh, the ethereal to happen in reality and physicality. So that's, that's important. And I think that everyone should really practice that type of um, intention creation um, on even a bigger scale. Like you've, you've, you've always said that, um, uh, you, you repeated it a few times. You said that you have to ask for more and not be shy about what to ask for and so on and so forth. So, but I wanted to comment on, on, uh, the film industry and how, um, when you're approaching, uh, regular people in the film industry that are used to working with studios and, uh, distribution companies and, and they do come from a place of judgment against people with independent projects. They, they look at independent people like us all here on this, um, uh, on this chat. They look at us uh, with uh, uh, cynicism and with uh, an eye that we're not as serious or as uh, likely to succeed as um, all the other people that work for Warner Brothers or Paramount and Disney and so on and so forth. So I wanted to put forward this intention that we should all go into raising funding for our films, knowing that we are probably a lot more courageous than those that work for the studios. They have cushy jobs and they don't have to really worry about paying the bills while they're raising money for their films or making films we do and they don't really risk anything other than their own job or looking good all they care about is how to look good to their own bosses and the boss is looking good to the board and the board has to look good in front of each other so that they can remain on the board and and that's basically the the backbone of the film industry that we end up having to interface with um, after raising our own money we end up going like slaves going, please, sir, can you take my film? But I, I want to invite all of you to see, to see it from a different perspective. We're not the ones uh, that we should be begging. They are. The content creators are the kings and those that want content should be bowing to us for going through this journey. I remember when I was at the Cannes Film Festival, I sat down with the president of 20th Century Fox International Distribution and he did say this to me. He said to me, Basil, if you only know how incredibly important content is to distribution companies, you would be negotiating uh, deals differently. And that's really what I wanted to uh, con contribute to this conversation is that we must understand how important it is to continue creating content without people like us we, we will always, uh, the, the whole world will be completely different. The, the distribution companies will have nothing to distribute. Um, and one last uh, comment I wanted to make was that um, when a film is final and it's finished and it's about to be shown to everyone, uh, what's incredible about it is that that is the culmination of all the creations and all the, the dreams and 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 feelings 
uh, and sorrows and agony that we've endured. This is, this is the result of everything that we have gone through, all the lessons that we've learned, um, all the obstacles that we've overcome. That is really the, the achievement itself is that the film has been created in reality, in, in physical reality. So, it, it, so at no point in time, we should ever give that film away uh, lightly to a distribution company just because they said, how much is the film? And we say, oh, it was a million dollars. Uh, how about 1.25 million and you walk away? Most, I've seen a lot of filmmakers agree to that deal. This is so saddening when I, when I witness something like that. It's, it, it really breaks my heart because there is no number, there is no price for all the sorrows and, uh, uh, and, and sadness and, and agony that we've experienced to make, uh, to make the film. The film maybe cost one million, but the agony and the sorrow isn't one million, it's probably a hundred million. And that's really what, the, the, what Paul, the, uh, the president of Fox was kind of telling me is that they know how hard it is to make a movie, but they play the game that the movie is just the budget. That's what I wanted to tell everybody. It is not the budget. It's what happens outside the budget that's not in the budget. That's the real price of filmmaking. Yes, and you are the power. You you want them to recognize that they should they should feel empowered, Basil, because you guys are the creators. They can't live without you, but they're not going to let you know that, right? Exactly. Well said. Thank you very much. Thank you. And yeah. I wanted to just say hi to Raj. Hi, Raj. This is Basil. Hi, Raj. <laughs> well, let's. There's two more people. Uh, let's um mute uh Raj. Raj and then Shen okay uh Raj is on unmute but I think he left or is he still there I can well, talk let's go oh, okay I can talk <laughs> okay uh Carol both Carol thank you so much I really enjoyed this session so I just want to share um some new and exciting um learnings from you, Carol, that you so kindly uh, uh, taught me uh, before my very important um, meeting with my um, donor who attended our live event uh, on uh, August 3rd. This is a, a four journeys uh, screening and uh, a local donor and also a longtime friend who I have uh, sort of been out of touch for a few years. But he was uh, so impressed with our screening event and just love every single film in our uh, collection. And he donated $100 before seeing a single frame. Like he donated $100 at registration. So I knew he is very motivated to support me. And so afterwards, his name is Sean. I just said, Sean, thank you so much for your support. Um, with your support, I can do more and I can be successful earlier than without you. So then he said, I want to hear more, let's have lunch. So then we had lunch last uh, Saturday in the uh, most uh, exclusive neighborhood uh, in San Diego, it's Rancho Santa Fe, the richest zip code. That's where he plays um, tennis. And he knows all the wait staff at the restaurant. He invited me to the pony room. So as the Carol, you so kindly um, coached me about trying to get to know your friend and don't tell him all about just, you know, your film. The film should not be the entire conversation. Get to know him, build a relationship, which I did. I took four hours to get to know him, know his three generations. Um, you know, his family came from uh, Ireland and so forth. So I learned very important facts. His grandmother was on the board of Scripps Hospital as a major donor. And so his family has a tradition of philanthropy and that extends to himself. And then he told me that he's been uh, doing organizing um, fundraisers in San Diego for some medical groups regularly. And so before the pandemic, when they had the uh, in-person um, uh, fundraiser, he said he and his friends 
raised over a million dollars in one afternoon. Oh my God. That's the kind of person you want. Exactly. So, so Carol, what, then what I said to my friend, Sean, says, Sean, that's awesome. I want you to lead my fundraising effort. Do it with me. Do it with my film because yes. you love the film and together we can make it a huge success and impact society. And he said, I'm in. So he and I will, um, you know, do this uh, fundraiser together. We even have a plan. I said, we're going to do it in a lavish uh, estate at one of your friends who likes to show off, you know, their, their, their great place. We're going to have the party there. And then we're going to invite top restaurants, you know, with food like they do with a San Diego um, press club party where they donate all the food because the journalists are covering it. So we're going to have our VIPs and we're going to have journalists too. So they'll do that. And then we will show some uh, exclusive scenes from our film. And, and then the kicker is that myself and my uh, dance partner who will be in the finale of my film showing that my life is going on, you know, that I'm going back to my a uh, young love, uh, uh, dancing, like when I, my, my husband and I, when he was alive, we were, um, you know, students, dancing is what I love, and I haven't done that for many years, but now I'm going back to that, so that would be my finale, and so my dance partner and I will do a dance to show my donors <laughs> at the party. What fun, what fun, that'll be great. Yeah, so we plan to do that. You know, like you said, Carol, um, in the, before the holiday season officially kicks off because then people, you know, have the mindset of think about philanthropy. And so, you know, I said, uh, I want to have all your friends and then I'm going to combine them with my own CEO contacts from the biotech industry before my career um, transition. And so we're gonna, you know, get all these uh, great people and great resources together, have the media cover it, and I will have them in my film too. So they get great uh, show off, you know, in my own film, plus other media coverage. And so it's gonna be like a, a love fest for everyone. Wonderful. This is a great piece of <laughs> So thank you so much for that. Very timely one-on-one -on -one you had with me like the day before I had my luncheon. And I so appreciate you, Carol. Oh, how kind of you. Thank you very much. Well, that's what we're here for. Yes. You need support like that. That's terrifying to know I'm going to meet someone who can fund the whole film. How do I handle it? So very good of you to let him talk about himself and his family. Absolutely. That was that's a key. That's wonderful. Well, good luck. Thanks for sharing that. Well, thank you, Carol. It's going to be the last one that we talked to because these people have been really considerate to stay on so long. Okay. Uh, Raj, go ahead. I just unmuted you. Okay. Well, is he there? Maybe no. he left. I think he left. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I sincerely appreciate you coming to the class and learning what you can. And just remember that you are the creator, just like Basil said, you're the power. You've got the talent and people need you. This world is exploding for content, more content. That's It's like a machine out there that's gobbling it up. So your film is important and it will be made. You have to make that a positive feeling inside you. you have to see yourself at the uh, event where you are screening your film. When you go to bed at night, visualize that you're in your favorite screening room. I love the one at Raleigh Studios and that you're sitting in the control seat where you tell the projectionist to run your film and you see the lights go down and the curtains open up and there comes your film. And you see, there's so much pride in you that comes out. You see the title, you see the director, you see the cinematographer, and you just keep saying, I made the right decision. I love this. I made a great film. And then you cut to the end where everybody is standing and applauding and it's a hit. So this is your signal to the universe that you are an award-winning successful filmmaker. 
If you go to bed at night and run that story in your mind, you can start opening doors that may have never been there before. And so that's it for From the Heart, from Carol Joyce and all of us over here. We sincerely thank you and wish you the very best of luck with your projects.